Hello everybody, I'm Yu-Gi-Oh! Deckmaster, and it's time for another Deck Special! Hello everybody, I'm Yu-Gi-Oh! Deckmaster, a.k.a. Jason Lee. Um, and I decided to finally bring a real life, which took forever to get, a deck special for my Labyrinth deck called Labyrinth of Nightmare. Uh, it took me a while to get all the cards. Costed me around 270 for everything. Uh... And I'm still not done. Like, I'm running Pot of Extravagance because I don't have access to Pot of Prosperity yet. So that's going to be an added cost. Eventually, an access code I'd like put in there. So there are ways to build upon this. And if my cat starts crying, it's because I'm talking. And he's not the center of attention. So just ignore him. He uh, He's a diva. He's a Mel, but he's a diva. So this is the build as is. I took basically this build minus like two cards um, to locals, 50 main event, got fifth place. Um, not bad, ended up facing four tier, tier elements, bleh, one sprite tier element, and one, uh, one of the four tier elements was a sprite tier element, and one alter geist. I beat three of the tier elements pretty easily because I have a way of abusing Dimensional Barrier. And then uh, the Sprite tier element deck just... I mean, they opened up the nuts. They That was my only loss. And I think they went undefeated the whole event. They opened up as Eradicator Epidemic in their opening hand. And they were going first. I run go second cards, not hand traps. So, for the most part, so... <clears throat> Yeah, got blown out, and then game two, I set up a really good board, but they even laid me, and I had no outs for that, and it is what it is. Uh, Ultra Guys player, <laughs> that one was kind of funny. That was round three, I believe, and it was funny because game one, they even laid me, um, which is, I mean, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised, but Ultra Guys meaning evenly is kind of weird. Uh, and I had a hard time coming back from that. I ended up losing that game. And then game two, I even lead them. And they had a hard time coming back, so it went to game three. And we were back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, I ended up inflicting, I want to say, 1,600 to them. And they had no other cards. They drew a Melusik, attacked. But it ended up going into time. I had 75. They had whatever 16 minus 8,000 is. I won. Uh, and every other deck was kind of mostly 2-0. And it's it's a lot to do because you can abuse Dimensional Barrier in this build so easily. So, uh, I'll also be entering an event tomorrow. I'll post my findings. And uh, any fixes I decide to do will also be mentioned then as well. So look forward to that in the next couple of days. Um, with that being said, if you like, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And, uh, here's my take on it. Whether you agree or disagree, this is how I like playing the deck, and it seems to be working for me. So, all right, let's start with the monsters. We're going to start off with Triple Backjack. This is a card you want to see as early as possible because the second you get him in the grave, you get to stack your deck and then on your opponent's turn, you know, banish him, reveal a normal trap, set it, and be able to use it that turn. It's really powerful. And there are ways to actually get this in the grave turn zero in this deck. You know, your opponent's going the first turn of the duel. And, you know, you rip off, it. it's RNG, but if you rip off like a D barrier or something, you might just completely halt your opponent's turn. Uh, then we got Triple Ariana, uh, the Labyrinth Servant. Her effect is she has a uh, hard once per turn, and you can only use one or the other effect per turn. She's the only Labyrinth card with this. 
claws, which is a stupid. Uh, when she's normal summon, she Stratuses for any Labyrinth card except herself. And when normal or special, she can do that. Or uh, if a monster leaves the field by a normal trap effect that you activated, meaning the monster is banished, destroyed, bounced back to deck, hand, wherever, as long as it leaves the field by a normal trap you activated, you can activate her effect. We're going to call this the trap effect because they all can kind of do this. All the Labyrinth cards can. Her trap effect is that you can draw a card and then either special summon a fiend from your hand or set a spell or trap. Sadly, you cannot activate it that turn. Otherwise, damn. I do not run the other level four. That one allows you to send a normal trap from your hand or filled to the grave to special summon a level four fiend from your deck. There are utilities for it, but right now I just don't feel it's useful. If you want to run it, a one of at best. Um, and if you know you're facing like a lot of Sword Soul players, you can get something like Token Collector. If you're facing a lot of like Eltledge builds or things like that, non dark focused decks, you can get a Barrier Statue, the dark one. But I'm mostly facing Tier Elements, and neither of those do anything. So I'm sticking with her for now. That may change in the future, though. Uh, and then uh, Arion, as the other one's second effect, is the same as this one. Uh, trap effect, monster leaves the field, you get to draw, and then either special or set. Only difference is she's 1,800, but has weaker defense. This one has 2,100 defense, 1,600 attack. Um, then we got... Two Labyrinth uh, Chandra is how I'm going to pronounce this. It's what it was called in Japan, anyway. Um, and we're going to go ahead and also show two uh, Labyrinth Stoby Torby. Uh, they both have basically the same effect. The first effect, you can discard them or send them from the field and then uh, discard one other card to set a Labyrinth Spell or Trap from your deck, and it's a quick effect. Also, their trap effect, if the monster leaves the field, uh, Chandra here will come back to your hand, and Stovey will special summon itself. And you can do each once per turn. This is, this is how you get, um, since it's a quick effect to send, this is how you get things like... Um, Backjack to go off on your opponent's turn. Send it and backjack, then backjack will activate and you'll kind of be able to go. And the fact that this can special summon itself and you have so many ways to swarm monsters, you can link like no tomorrow in here. Then we have two lovely Labyrinth of the Silver Castle. She is your boss of the deck. Good 2900 can be easily summoned off the trap, uh, which is the key of the deck. Her main effects are, while she's face up on the field, your opponent can't activate any monster effects when you activate a normal trap, so that totally awesome is not negating your traps, uh, or the Griffin Rider, or whatever else the fuck they're playing. Uh, once per turn during your turn, you can target a normal trap in your grave and set it. Can't activate it that turn, but you do get to set it, uh, and basically, that's how you abuse D-Barrier, but... You cannot activate the card set by her unless you control a fiend. So if they get rid of all your monsters, that card's not doing anything. You have to have a fiend on the field. I guess that's some way of doing something. And then her trap effect, uh, if the monster leaves the field, she can destroy one card on your opponent's field or randomly one card from your opponent's hand. I love monsters with hand destruction effects. That is so good. Now, not against tier elements, no. Uh, so be cautious there. But against other decks, that's really nice just to be, and especially if you get them down on the draw, they go draw, you go, and keep in mind their trap effects are if a monster leaves the fill by a normal trap, yours or your opponent's, it's not just your opponent. So if you say compulse one of your monsters back to hand, she's still on the field, her effect will activate, pop the card they just drew, then come your turn, you reset compulse, summon back the monster that was bounced back to your hand. Oh, great. You can just keep doing that. You gotta lock their ass for the most part. Won't come up too often, but it's a nice little thing to have in your engine. One thing I'm running that it seems most players aren't 
is uh, I'm running two Lord of the Heavenly Prisons. I've seen most builds not run this. I don't know why. I love it. Uh, you reveal this card to protect your set cards until the end of your opponent's turn. And then uh, during your opponent's turn, when you activate a set, spell, or trap, or your opponent does, you can special summon them and then send a spell or trap from your deck. I mean, this just gets you cards when you're missing certain things. Gives you a nice 3,000 beater uh, and or defender. And, uh, you know, protects your back row. Always nice. That's it for the monsters. It's a total of 14 monsters. I run 42 cards, just so you know. Now we go spells. I run two Labyrinth Labyrinth. Labyrinth Labyrinth is very interesting. It gives all Wolcom Labyrinth normal traps you activate. Well, you can do it once per turn. So, basically, the first Wolcom Labyrinth trap you activate gets an additional effect that when it resolves, you can pop a card on the field. Either side of the field, spell, trap, monster, face up, face down, doesn't matter, pop a card on the field. On resolution. So, uh, if they don't negate the Wolcom Labyrinth, you're going to get to pop and they won't be able to chain at that point in time. Also, if a non-Labyrinth trap, normal trap, is activated, except during the damage step, you can special summon one Fiend, not Labyrinth, Fiend, from your hand or grave. It's pretty crazy, because you can kind of bring back stuff. It's a really good card, and it can be searched out with, uh, well, like a good chunk of your deck can actually search this out, so it's kind of crazy, and... It just allows a lot of comeback, which is really nice. Then for now, we're running triple, or double, not triple, Pot of Extravagance. I do not want a Pot of Extravagance into Pot of Extravagance. That's all I'm saying. I want to reduce the odds of that. I do want to get two Pot of Prosperities, but with them being short printed in the 10, 2022 10, um, we'll see. Um, but that is my goal. But for now... Draw two is nice. Now, a lot of people have actually told me not to run this or Prosperity because it can interfere with Ariadne's draw effect. And I'm like, uh, you know what? I'd give a plus two up for a draw and possibly set or summon. Or if I want to do that effect, uh, you know, I just won't activate the card that turn. Uh, then we have our normal traps. There are, I think, 24. And most of them are two ups. Two compulse, bounce the monster back to hand. It's the easiest one to trigger. You can do it on your own, do it on your opponents, get effects going. And remember, you can chain these however you want. You know, Lovely Labyrinth, Ariadne, Field Spell, Stovey, Chandra, some other stuff. And then, you know, do it in the chain order you want. You can get up to, like, a chain seven. I've done it before. Got people to rage quit online from that shit. Um, I'm running Triple Dark Sacrifice. Now, this card says if your opponent activates a card effect that would destroy a card on the field, card or cards, I should say, theirs or yours, you can activate this, right, you know, chain it right to that card, negate its effects, and then send a level three or lower dark monster from your deck. You got Chandra, you got Stovey, but more importantly, you got Backjack to set up some plays. And it's not once per turn. It'll help keep your back row. You know, those Lightning Storms just ain't going to do much. And you can really do it on anything to help get you triggered up and get another trap. But do remember this has to be changed directly to the Destruction Effect. So you can't, like, Trap Trick it out and then activate it. Because you'll have this timing. Or the, the window for it by that point. Of course, we got Triple Dimensional Barrier with so many decks falling into the categories that this gives. Uh, this card is pretty much a turn stopper in a lot of ways. We got two Ice Dragon Prisons because Non-Target Banish is always nice. Plus, it can give you Link Material if need be. Excuse me. Two Dogmatica Punishments, you got a few targets. And keep in mind, you might say, well, you might not, you know, see it when you need to see it. Well, you have ways to get to it, A. And B, remember, Lovely can reuse the any trap you want as much as you want once per turn. Just reset it. 
So you'll always be able to abuse any trap in your grave, pretty much. Any normal trap, anyway. Uh, this card just, you know, pop a monster, send, pop another, or draw, depending. Uh, we got two Dynamiscus, because Chandra comes back to hand, Stovey comes back to fill, Backjack, you don't mind discarding. Hell, even a lot of the other fiends, you don't really care about discarding if you got the field spell up. Uh, or their key trap will have a way of coming back, too. So, yeah, target a card on the field, and you discard it as part of the effect, which is actually kind of cool, and then banish that monster. Uh, which means that, say you discard uh, any of those things that I just mentioned, they'll instantly come back to you in some way. So, that's kind of cool. It's like basically activating this for free. We got two Terror of the Overroots, target a card your opponent controls and a card in their grave, and swap them. You send the card on the field to the grave and set the card from the grave to the field. This uh, is a way to out everything that's a problem to you. It just uh, it just outs it. it goodbye. <laughs> you don't like that Mystic Mind on the field? Fine. Replace it with a spell that they can't use. Or a monster face down, like a hand trap or something that they activated. And, of course, we got Double Trap Trick. Now, remember, always activate this last. So you can go through your other traps. Uh, and then once you get one of your traps in rotation, you can always keep bringing it back. You banish a, a normal trap from your deck and then set one of the same name from your field. But it, you can only do one more trap for the turn. And then, of course, we got Triple Welcome Labyrinth. Remember, with the field spell, after this resolves, it gets an additional Papa Monster. But... Its main effect is special summon a uh, Labyrinth monster from your deck. And then you're locked into Fiends until the end of your next turn. So, okay, fine. My extra deck's made to work around that for the most part. And the uh, cool part is, is if you get the field spell out, what you want to try to do as soon as possible and get two of these in rotation. One in the grave, one in the field. You activate one, summon a monster, pop something. They have a trap effect. It's trap effect states that a you know, the whole, if the monster leaves the field, yada yada thing. You can set this card from the grave to the field as long as it wasn't sent there this turn. So you activate one, it goes to the grave. You activate the second one on another turn, and it pops a card, summons a monster. Then the first one that you activate is going to set itself. That one's going to go to the grave then the next turn, because they are once per turn. And you kind of just keep looping them back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's removal that summons from your deck. Well, it's not like, well, it's not a lie weather, you know. But you do have to have the field spell up for it to be a removal. Do you remember that? And then finally, we got two, or three, Red Warrior of the Warlords. Uh, depending on your format, you could go Gozen in the main. But again, Terra Elements, mostly dark. So I'm going with that mentality. So Rivalry is just better at stopping them. But I do side Gozen, so... You can always swap it out. And, uh, yeah, they can only control one monster type. So that's the goal there. For the side, we'll go through real quickly. The only hand trap I'm running. Triple Nibiru was running triple Super Poly, but going against tier, that's just helping him out too much, in my opinion. Uh, and you got plenty of ways to get rid of dead copies in your hand, so... That's fine. I'm going to try this. If I don't like it, I might switch to Lava Golem or DD Crow. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts of this down below, but, you know, they do five summons. I'm going to attribute their whole field. Of course, we got to one Pancratops. Uh, just attribute it to pop a card, and it's easily special summoned. Double Lightning Storm. Triple Evenly. Horde Breakers. Uh, when I'm not going against Tier Elements, Triple Torrental Tribute, <laughs> I do not want to trigger this on them. They get too many pluses. Uh, but, you know, if Rivalry or Gozen isn't really good against them, Torrental could be. Or if Dimensional Barrier ain't good against them, Torrental most likely will be. Uh, and then, of course, Triple Gozen, so they can only have one attribute on the field. Keep in mind, majority of my deck besides Heavenly Prison is Dark Fiend, and Heavenly Prison himself is a Dark Rock. 
So, mm, not too hard to work around with that. Now for the extra, uh, for right now we have one Unchained Abomination. It is a Dark Fiend, so it works with Rivalry or Gozen. And because you get so many monsters on the field, this card just pops. Uh, if a monster is destroyed by battle, it pops. If a card is destroyed on the field by a card effect, you can destroy a card on the field. And then during each end phase, you can pop a card. Plus these 3,000. We got BLS. This, you obviously can't summon with Gozen or Rivalry out, but... I mean, with Lovely or Heavenly, it can't be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects and then can get beefy and go over shit. We got Nightmare Unicorn. If we're locked under and Fiends, this is a Dark Fiend that can spin something. We got Nightmare Phoenix. Fire, so okay, if Gozen's in, you can't go into it, but if you're under Rivalry, you can still go into it because for some reason he's a Fiend, not a Wing of Beast. Pop a back row. We got Nightmare Cerberus. Same concept, pop a special summon monster. Uh, this will be replaced for the new Underworld Reporter Fiend that's coming out in the next set. But for now, Cerberus. One Dark, for if you're either Dark Locked or, you know, free to do whatever you want, bring back a Dark Monster. Enough said there. One Beat Cop to protect your field spell. I wish they had a level one Fiend. They don't. Two Link Karibos, you are playing Extravagant, so if you send one, you want to keep one just for backjack. Um, it's nice to be able to trigger when you can. One Garua for the occasional Dogmatica Punishment I can hit with this, because this with Ariadne and Punishment allow me to pop a monster and then draw two, which is nice because Ariadne draws one and then this draws one, so it's a pot of fucking greed. Who didn't love that? Of course, because we are we are running Pot of Extravagance. I'm running Triple Elder Entity Entis. It goes to the grave. You pop a card on the field. Enough said there. I will cut this down to two and Link Karibo to one once I get Pot of Prosperity. And then I will put a random Link 3 in there that is just for climbing up and an access code. Then, of course, if we get two Ariadnes on the field, which isn't too hard to do with us repeatedly abusing that trap or the field spell. We got one Baguska. If we need to either have a non-targetable, non-destructible punch or Swords of Revealing Light, but Mystic Mind style. Uh, basically, Mystic Mind on legs. Let's just call it what it is. Or one Durgaris which just lets us do one of three effects. You detach two. You can skip your next draw phase to draw two and discard one. This can get you further into your deck. Special summon a monster from your grave, but you skip your next main phase one or skip your next battle phase and double your next turn's battle phase. I should say it's always the next turn. Um... Skip uh, the battle phase of your next turn, and if you do double the attack of one monster on the field. So, this can help you OTK, bring back one of the monsters from the grave. That one you won't do as much. Or, draw two. And that is my deck. 15 side, 15 extra, and 42 main. Please let me know your thoughts below, and as always, stay safe. Tell the loved ones you love them. Keep your fur baby safe. And as always, until next time, peace out. Rock on.